All right, on another taxing issue, psychologists were sounding the alarm in Ottawa today over a move to tax mental health care. The amendments would apply GST and HST to privately provided psychological services in some cases. Dr. Karen Cohen is CEO of the Canadian Psychological Association. She joins us live. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Glad All right, to be so here. what was not taxed before but seems to be taxed this year? Principally, we're talking about assessment. So if a determination needs to be made by a private insurer, the kind of condition that someone has, um, in order to give them access to the services they need, those kinds of assessments, reports, uh, certifications will now be taxed. Hmm. The reason it's so concerning to us as psychologists is that in this country, psychological services are by and large not covered by our public health insurance plans. So the patient pays. You pay out of pocket or you rely on private insurance that you may have. So if you've had a motor vehicle accident, if you've had a work accident, if you're applying for disability, likely an insurer is going to be involved and the insurer may require an assessment. So why don't health care pl plans cover it uh, in all provinces? Like it's a part of your essential health insurance, isn't it? Why don't they cover yeah. it? Yeah, that's a good question. But that's um, another question altogether, that, that isn't it? That may be a whole other show. <laughs> um, but basically what we have is we insure designated providers to provide designated services to Canadians in designated venues. So physician services are covered. But mm -hmm. there are hundreds of thousands of other healthcare providers, psychologists among them, and when those services are delivered outside of publicly funded facilities like hospitals, they are not covered by our plan. So people have to look to other means to access the care they need. So presumably the cost of getting this care will go up anywhere between 13... I guess in Alberta all that last, but in other provinces, you can go up to 13, 15 percent. Exactly, and it's not inconsiderable. So if you've had a motor vehicle accident, you've had a head injury, assessing cognitive function can be a complicated and lengthy procedure in terms of test administration and interpretation. It could take a few days of testing, could be hundreds, maybe thousands of dollars to get a full assessment done, and mm -hmm. that will be taxed. All right, I'll play devil's advocate. Why this particular service should be uh, exempted from taxation and a lot of other services are fully taxed. Well, I think that's a good point. It applies equally not just to psychologists but other health care providers mm -hmm. working in the private physiotherapy, sector. Physiotherapy, I think, absolutely. is the same thing. A absolutely. So any uh, assessment that a physiotherapist might do, an occupational therapy uh, therapist might do, arguably, is, is going to run into the same problem, that the service that is already insufficiently accessible because it's not provided by the public system will now be taxed and made more inaccessible to people who need it. And they're tax so they're taxed now, and they were taxed last year, like chiropractors and Psych and all those other affiliated um, well, physical conditions. Well, actually, I think in the act what they're talking about is what isn't a health care supply has to do with determinations and evaluations, and mm -hmm. those would include psychological evaluations, but equally will include physio, I would assume, physio, I can't speak for the physiotherapist, right, right. But, but them and the occupational therapists and those kinds of mm -hmm. evaluations as well. So those may be new as well. What do you think is going to happen if this goes through? Uh, will patients actually not seek treatment because of the cost, or are they going to need it anyway? Well, to some extent, that already happens. People ha We know that only about a third of people who need mental health care actually uh, seek and receive it. In part, that's related to stigma, but in part, it's related to resource. It's related to the fact that they're not publicly funded, and now we've gone ahead and made it even more inaccessible. Like, why did they decide to do this in 2014 15? What, what brought this on? Well, I think, you know, I guess you'd have to speak to CRA specifically yeah. for that, but I think what they were trying to do is clarify what is a health service, what isn't a health service, whether mm -hmm. there was a particular case or issue that brought about this need for clarification, mm -hmm. I'm not sure. Clarification is a good thing. It's good that they did it because there's been tremendous confusion since budget 2013 till almost two years later the fall of 2014 when they did the clarification and our members you know really did need some clarity around what do I charge tax for and what do I don't. Slightest hint you're getting a, a, a favorable hearing from CRA or anyone else? We've been at it for a few years trying to uh, <laughs> speak to uh, CRA, finance, uh, the, the different political parties and try to get them to reconsider how they do it and we'll keep at it. All right. Good luck with that. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Appreciate Thank you coming you. on, Karen. Thank you.